everyone well it's not morning for me but it is for you if you're watching this in the morning I've got to get extra videos recorded before I go back to work so I got to try to do one or two a day to make sure that I can keep up because I'll be working three days and I seem to be able to have my phone with me most of the day but obviously I can't record anything, not when I'm on a film set. So this last week, well this weekend that we're in now that just passed for you on Monday, they started celebrating Purim. It's a Jewish holiday, but it only you can really find out about it if you read the book of Esther. The one book in the Bible that talks about Jesus as well as any book in the Bible, and it never mentions him or God or anything. And we're going to read out of the uh, ninth chapter and see what happens when Satan tries to eliminate God's people. It tends to backfire. So whenever Satan's trying to do something to you, just hold on. Rebuke him if you can, but if not, God will take care of him. Okay, so we're in chapter 9, verse 1. Now in the twelfth month, that is the month of Adar, on the thirteenth day, a time came for the king and his decree to be executed. On that day, the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them. But the opposite occurred, and that the Jews themselves overpowered those who hated them. Don't we long for those days again? Well, they're about to start back up, but we're not here yet. The Jews gathered together in their cities throughout all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus to lay hands on those who sought to harm. quiet motorcycle and like that and no one could who sought their harm and no one could withstand them because fear of them fell upon all people and all the officials of the provinces the satraps the governors and those doing the king's work helped the Jews because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them if you need to know the story, you can go do that. We're just studying Purim here. It is an interesting story. You really ought to read it from the beginning. I guess I could do that at some point, but it's a long story, and I can't do it in one sitting. 9.4. For Mordecai was great in the king's palace, and his fame spread throughout all the provinces. For this man, Mordecai, became increasingly prominent. Thus the Jews defeated all their enemies with the stroke of the sword, with slaughter and destruction, and did what they pleased with those who hated them. And in Shushan, the citadel, the Jews killed and destroyed 500 men. And also, and it's going to list a whole bunch of cities here, and I will probably butcher the names, Paratha and Adalia and Eridatha and Parmasta, Erisei, Eridai, Fahashta. <laughs> that if I could clear my throat, it would sound more Jewish. And the ten sons of Haman, the sons of Hamadatha, the enemy of the Jews, they killed, but they did not lay a hand on the plunder. big child's party going on down there. Lots of kids and screaming. I guess that was too much for the old folks on the bike. That was a tri-bike. On that day, the number of those who were killed in Shushan at the citadel was brought to the king. And the king said to Queen Esther, the Jews have killed and destroyed 500 men in Shushan in the citadel, and then 10 sons of Haman. What have they done with the rest of the king's provinces? Now, what is your petition? It shall be granted to you. Or what is your further request? It shall be done. 
And Esther said, if it pleases the king, Esther's Jewish, the king's not. Let it be granted to the Jews who are in Shushan to do it again tomorrow according to today's decree, and let Haman's ten sons be hanged on the gallows. Haman was the one that tried to have all the Jews executed. And did kind of a trickery like they did with Daniel in his praying and got the king to agree to kill him because he didn't really fully understand the request. And then Haman was going to go out and do it. And then Esther, being a Jew, had the sight and ear of the king. So the king commanded it to be done. The decree was issued in Shushan, and they hanged Haman's ten sons. And the Jews who were in Shushan gathered together again on the 14th day of the month of Adar and killed 300 men of Shushan, but they did not lay a hand on the plunder. None of this was ever done over spoils. It was done because these people hated the Jews. Sound familiar, Hamas? Uh, 19. The remainder of the Jews of the king's provinces gathered together and protected their lives, had rest from their enemies, and killed 75,000 of their enemies, but they did not lay a hand on the plunder. This was on the 13th day of the month, and the 14th day of the month they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. The Feast of Purim. So that's where we get it from. They turned the tides on the evil ones, trying to kill off all the Jews. Got the king's favor. The king ordered all the bad guys killed. And after it was all done, they celebrated with a feast. But the Jews who were in Shushan were assembled together on the 13th day, as well as on the 14th. And on the 15th of the month, they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore, the Jews of villages who dwelt in the unwalled towns celebrated the 14th day of the month of Adar with gladness and feasting, a holiday for sending presents to one another. And Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters to all the Jews near and far who were in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus to establish among them that they should celebrate yearly the 14th and 15th days of the month of Adar as the days on which the Jews had rest from their enemies, as the month which was turned from sorrow to joy for them, and from mourning to holiday, that they should make them days of feasting and joy and sending presents to one another and gifts to the poor. We know what those days are like. We have Christmas and other holidays. So the Jews accepted the custom that they begun as Mordecai had written to them, because Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, the enemy of all the Jews, had plotted against the Jews to annihilate them and had cast her, that is a lot, to consume them and destroy them. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded by the letter that this wicked plot which Haman had devised against the Jews should return on his own head and that he and his sons he and his son should be hanged on the gallows so that they called the days of Purim after the name Pur, Lot, uh, casting lots. Therefore, because of all the words of this letter, what they had seen concerning this matter and what had happened to them, the Jews established and imposed it upon themselves that their descendants and all who would join them that would without fail, that they should celebrate these two days every year. And it's still going on. Uh, we're still going on to 30. They're just still talking about it. It's a big deal to them that they were able to. Now, we don't really, we, there, there are guesses of who this could be and where this would be, and we don't know who wrote it. It is a good story, a story about God's victory for his people over somebody who wants to annihilate them. Persia, Iraq, Turkey, Jordan, 
Syria, Lebanon, all these Jewish nations that surround Israel. You know this book and you fear this book. But you're going to be pulled along. Satan's going to drag you into this. You need to resist him. But you won't. We're told you won't. And there will be a massive war, in which case you will all suffer. In the meantime, we're going to celebrate with the Jews, Purim. By the time you see this, it'll be over, but that's okay. You can still celebrate it. I hope you have a great week. Like I said, I will be working three days out of this week. I don't know after that. It's just that we don't know what we're going to be doing. We're at the bottom of the food chain. As a background actor, which is what I am, I may be featured, but it's still background. What have I got? Crown. Uh, it's just a squirrel. I haven't seen the armadillos out much. It's warming up, so they've got more time to forage. Earlier today, I recorded a video, which would have been Monday's release, I guess. But I didn't have my camera in hand. I stopped and went over and talked to somebody. A beautiful eagle flew by. He was a photographer. He had his camera, great big long lens. And he was able to get some pictures of it. But they're out. I have to go hunting for them. See if I can find them. All right. Till we meet in the clouds, everybody. Be nice, help others, and hold on. <laughs>